We are on. So Jamie, I just want to say thank you for being my first guest on this uh, pilot program that I'm running, um, the Survive and Thrive, Surviving and Thriving series. And um, I'm Anna Gibbs. For anyone who's watching who doesn't know, I am a general manager with the Keller Williams Silicon Valley Group. I'm also a business coach and a life coach. And I have a strong passion for being entrepreneurs grow and thrive. And so I thought it would be really great for us to, you know, have a series where I could talk to some small business owners, interview them, and really share their thoughts with all of you on how they've been able to understand, navigate, and pivot uh, with everything that has changed in the last two months with the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is my friend, Jamie uh, Giuliano, and she is the um, owner with her husband, Marcus. Uh, owner and operator of Aroma Time Bistro in Ellenville, a fabulous place if you haven't checked it out. And uh, Jamie, I just want to say thanks again. And maybe you can start by just telling everybody a little bit about you and your business. Excellent. So I, I wasn't not paying attention. I was just sharing and um, starting a watch party. Cool. And yeah. We want people to watch. That uh, my husband, Marcus, will start a watch party through Aroma Time. So. Great personally and uh, through Aroma Time. So thank you, Anna, for having me. I, I really appreciate it. And um, I will tell you a little bit about myself and, um, and I guess we can talk a little bit about how we met as well. Sure. So my husband and I uh, opened Aroma Time Bistro um, in Ellenville, um, let's see, in the Hudson Valley um, about 17 years ago. So 2003 into 2004. Uh, the restaurant is a farm to table restaurant, but more than a farm to table restaurant. We are really, really conscious about all of the ingredients that we bring into the restaurant, um, down to the salt on the tables. And we want to support small independents and um, give them the money opposed to giving money to big corporations. So we've been doing that for 17 years. Um, it's, it's definitely formulated over the many years. Our bar is, um, is a huge bar with lots of uh, independent spirits. So not only is it the food, but it's also the, uh, the bar as well down to the wines that we carry. Um, and so, you know, Marcus and I are just real people just trying to give you a great experience. Um, and obviously I'm talking more so back eight weeks ago when we, when yeah. the was open, but we just want to give good food, good service, and just be totally real with, with our guests and with people who are asking questions and stuff. You know, it's important where our food is coming from. It's important to support local and it's important to, to just know, you know, just everything about, at least for us, everything about our business and where things are coming from. So. Yeah, I know that's been your mission from day one. And um, my husband and I have had many wonderful dinners there and uh, spent time at the bar. So <laughs> uh, it, it's always been a great place to have dinner and will continue to be. And it's really a fixture in Ellenville. I mean, 17 years is a long time. So I'm sure that, as you said, you've evolved your business and you've seen it grow and you, you know, you get into a flow. <laughs> and then about eight weeks ago, the rug got pulled out from underneath. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, pretty much almost within a, a, a day's time, you, you had to shift, right? So tell no us, <laughs> what's that? I said, we had no idea what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, we're totally, um, I think not taken by surprise, but taken by surprise because we weren't sure what was going to happen. We weren't sure if we were going to stay open or we we're going to have to close um, and what was going to really be, be told of restaurants. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to be considered an essential business. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but at that point, okay, now you are an essential business, but these are the things that you can do. You can only right. take out, you can only do deliveries. Um, and that has never really been part of our, our, our model before. We would do takeouts if you called ahead and, and we would have it ready for you, but it was never part of what we did a lot of and right. weren't very good at it <laughs> because we just didn't really know. I mean, over 17 years, you figure out what works and what doesn't work for you. And, um, you know, again, you know, we, we had to quickly get into drive mode and figure out what we were going to do with ourselves. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like really overnight you had to pivot and shift because 
what you knew was your business model no longer was going to work and you had to redefine what you did and how you did it. So talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, what did you both, you know, you and Marcus, what did you have to do in terms of, you know, the practical side of the business staffing, right? You, you no longer could have the dining room open. Now you had to go to a hundred percent takeout if you wanted to stay open and you made the choice to stay open. Yes. Uh, some restaurants closed. Yep. So immediately within probably an hour of this happening, um, the governor made the statement on a Friday and within an hour, um, we were on the phone, phone with our seafood purveyor out of Alaska. And within an hour, we had 80 pounds of salmon being shipped to us. Uh, wild Alaskan salmon, frozen, individually, individually chiravac. And that's where we were going to start our model. So our model was going to be okay. We can't we can't have you come in and dine with us. We're going to give you good food that you can cook at home by yourself. Plus, we then decided we were doing $9.99 specials every night at the restaurant. So um, to go specials. And um, so selling fish and $9.99 specials, we were kind of like, all right, we got this. And our first couple of nights of doing $9.99 specials, I mean, even now we're super busy every night um, you know, selling those $9.99 specials. We have our regular menu available as well, but for the majority, it's those $9.99 specials. Um, every day we do something different. Um, we've added on a couple of things throughout the last couple of weeks. Um, and then not only did we do fish, we then decided, okay, we're doing fish, but now let's do uh, organic vegetables, let's do fruits, let's do, oh my gosh, what do we have in our storeroom? Because these are things that we use all the time. So we started pulling every idea out that we possibly could and um, we just we just went with it and then someone would call us and say hey do you have organic olive oil and hey do you have <laughs> um, avocado oil do you have grapefruit juice orange juice and and the other thing that really helped was we were able to serve wine um, and beer and and mixed drinks to go as well so Previously, wine had to be, um, you had to drink one glass of wine in the restaurant. It had to be put in a special bag with the cork, with a receipt, and you had to have one entree. And you could take your bottle of wine home with you if you didn't finish it at the restaurant. Now we are able to, now we are able to sell you a full bottle to go, almost like a liquor store. Um, we can sell you a full bottle of wine. We can, we've always been able to do beer to go. That's always been part of the, um, the license. Um, and then we can sell mixed drinks to go. So like, I know, <laughs> like it's wild. I mean, just to see how things have changed, you know, uh, from our norm is, is so interesting. So so creative. I, I think that, you know, when I, one of the reasons why I wanted to do these um, videos too, is because I've been having a lot of conversations with our own agents and how they've had to pivot and shift as, in their business. Other, you know, business owners that I'm connected to, you and I have been doing like a little accountability thing in the mornings, which has been great. And, and I, you know, I thought to myself, I think when a, a crisis hits and a challenge arises, we all have a choice to make, right? So some people, they kind of freeze, maybe get a little paralyzed for a moment out of fear or indecision. Um, some people pull back and, you know, completely retreat and other people roll up their sleeves and, and really like pull up that grit and get tenacious and creative. And, you know, from what I can see, I would put you in that latter category. So what do you attribute that to? I mean, some of these ideas, like where did they come from? Because you were not doing anything like that before. So, you know, 17 years ago when we did open in Ellenville, um, it was it, it was quite a feat, right? You know, there was no, nothing really open besides the Shadowland Theater and a couple of pizza places, Chinese places, but there were no fine dining restaurants. So from day one, we always had to push forward and we always had to be unique and different and come up with different ideas. Uh, about 11 years ago, we had joined a mastermind group of other restaurateurs. We met around the country three times a year. We brainstormed, we basically locked ourselves in a conference room for three days and we brainstormed. We'd go out together at night and we'd brainstorm and we'd, you know, we'd constantly be talking to these people outside of even being at those meetings. So basically accountability, and um, and brainstorming, you know, all in one shot, and you had this group that you could always contact. So we always had to be progressive, and we always had to keep up with the times, and always be doing different things. So 
we were pretty familiar with that. So we were never going to let fear stop us. If fear would have stopped us, that would have happened 17 years ago. Yeah. Uh, so fear was never an option. Um, I will say that um, I am the worry wart in the family when it comes to finances. Restaurant business is a very interesting business. You know, you never know when you're going to be busy. You never know if it's going to snow. You never know if it's going to rain. Yeah. You never know if an event's going to have to be canceled. So you always have to go with the flow. And so I'm always the worry wart. And I got to tell you, not one time through all of this have I been fearful of what could be that wouldn't be good. And really? I not even one minute? Not, I, no, I really haven't been that fearful. I get anxiety because I have a lot to do every day. But in terms of fearfulness, I knew that we would survive. And I knew the week before this all started, okay, it's now time to cut back our labor. It's now time to, you know, think about other things. So I kind of had that in the back of my mind, but I wasn't really fearful. I, Fear or I, faith, right? You have to choose which lane you're going to drive in. I think one of the conversations that we had back eight weeks ago when we were um, talking on our accountability was you have that fear of faith and you have to ha be faithful yeah. and you have to believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, listen, my family is, it, our son is a senior, right? So he's not getting graduation. Yeah. He's not getting prom. So but we have to believe that everything in life happens for a reason and there's a reason for it. And who knows what that reason is? We may never know. We might know, but we have to keep pu pushing forward and we have to yeah. do the best we can with what we're handed. So. And I think, I think we have to, um, we have to have faith in our own ability to navigate, right? We have to put, we have to bet on ourselves, even if we don't know exactly how we're going to figure it out. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that grit, that tenacity is, is really something that is a gift and it, it's what you know carries us through um what would you say has been like the hardest part of all of this in the last eight weeks not being able to go out and socialize um mm -hmm. not being able to have our friends around us constantly yeah. um you know marcus and i are extremely big um uh social social socializers so we yeah. love to be out we love to go to wine tastings we love to bring people in we love music we love all that stuff and so that for us has been challenging yeah. um and then i also find you know on the relationship side um Marcus and I don't have as much time to spend with each other because mm -hmm. we are working. We worked hard before we're working harder now, which is okay because we love what we do, but we're working harder. Yeah. Um, hopefully the end result will be, um, you know, top notch and, and where we want it to be. So I can relate to that. I have not worked this. I mean, I'm a hard worker all the time. I, I have a very demanding job that I love and a full plate all the time. But I have to say, like, it, it, it really has been very busy. And I've said to you, you know, we're the, we're the fortunate ones because we are working. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it is something that I don't take lightly because there's so many people right now we see, um, you know, unemployment rate is at a, a, an all-time high like we've never seen before. And my heart goes out to people. And a lot of people in your industry um, may not come back from this, right? They and, and everyone has a different path and everyone has a different um, structure and ability in their own business. Um, you had a structure that allowed, that allowed you to pivot and you were determined to succeed, uh, which is why you know, I, I called this surviving and thriving because I think from what I was able to watch, first you started survival mode and now you're into thriving mode. Yes. <laughs> right. Do you see it that way too? So, so talk about that movement. Like you talked about some things you did to keep your business open and survive. What's happening now and how are you changing and what do you see as far as the future goes for your business so that you're thriving? Sure. So there's a few, there's a few things in there. Um, you know, one, um, we talked about that survival mode. We have two options, right? You go forward or you go backwards, right? You grow or you die. So you have those options. And there was a point that I think Marcus and I looked at each other probably the first week and we were like, okay, either we are going forward or we're just going to file bankruptcy and be done, or we're going to close, right? We only had those two options. And so we decided obviously to push forward and we're always evolving. Um, and so we're now into, okay, the structure that we're doing right now is working really well. So how can we take this structure and push it forward? Because I don't want to say this is the new norm. And we talked about that this morning. Yeah. Um, 
I don't want this to be the new norm. I want to get back to normal, but, but what are we normal? What is normal? Right. So it, it needs to, we need to take what we have and we need to grow that however we're going to do that. And we love this business model of selling you fresh um, organic vegetables and you know groceries so you can cook at home. And we love that concept. And in Ellenville itself, we've been missing a farmer's market for years. We tr they've tried years and years of that. Um, so we have a couple of options now. So what better time to change your business model when you're thrown something like this, the little curveball? now is the best time, right? So now we're changing our model a little bit, not our concept, not at all. Our uh -huh. concept will stay the same. We will still support independence. We will still do all of that. But our model is going to change a little bit where we're going to restructure the menu. We're going to restructure our hours. We're going to restructure our staff. Um, and we're going to restructure all of the things that we need to, to make our business viable. Because who knows who's going to want to go out when all of this is over? Who knows how close people are going to want to sit to each other at a bar? Who knows? We have no idea. We don't know what the future looks like. So we have to be willing to adjust to all of those different things. And so, you know, we're talking about going tapas style. Um, so if you're familiar with tapas, um, you order off of a menu, smaller portion sizes, you order as much or as little as you want. And it comes out of the kitchen whenever it's ready. So say you order, and we're going to do more charcuterie plates, so more meats and cheeses and things like that. And so it comes out when it's ready out of the kitchen. So there's no, you don't have to time it. Um, you know, okay. I was going to ask you, like, what was the, um, the thought process behind there, the logic? So the thought process is staffing. Um, you know, the biggest cost in a restaurant is labor. And um, we're trying to cut our labor back and also not only cut it back because we want to bring our staff back, but we're going into what should be our busiest months. We haven't been able to hire more staff, train more staff, things like that. So because we don't know, because it's unforeseen. So we have to keep the staff that we have right now, bring them back on, train them on our new philosophy, uh -huh. but keep our staff small. So yeah. because we don't have another choice in that going into our busier time. So, so you don't need to have as much staff for something like tapas. Um, and we're talking about doing stuff in our garden more. Uh, we, we, our tent was set up today. We're gonna get a slushy machine so we can do frozen Negronis and um, organic frozen Negronis and uh, rosé. We're talking about just making it fun and just making it, you know, just a really fun place. Not that we haven't been fun before. It's a different fun. We were more fine dining. Now we're going to be more casual, mm -hmm. uh, office, fine dining, um, take food out to the fire pit, you know, eat on bamboo plates, things like that. So yeah, just fun. Just make it a little bit more fun. Yeah. I mean, so of course your business is unique because you're in the restaurant industry uh, and not, and not everyone who's watching this may be, but yet they may be in their own business. And I think what we all have in common is really just trying to a understand what's happening around us. We don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know when things will move forward. Um, yet, as much as we all can want things to go back to normal, normal is a fluid word. It, it, it's perception, really, right? And it's only what is normal is what is happening at the present moment. So. I think that we also have to embrace the fact that as we move through this and into new phases, we're, life is just not going to be the same. You know, we're going to, we're going to have conversations um, like, you know, we've heard other people do like before the war, we're going to be saying things like before COVID-19, you know? So I think all of us who are in business are looking at how do we shift and how do we reprioritize? How do we um, make decisions to keep us in the game? Yep. And how do we make decisions so that we learn from this experience so that we can prepare for the next, you know, meteor that could hit because this could be the beginning of, of other issues, right? There could, I right. hate to say it, there could be another pandemic, there could be other, you know, situations. And, and this is an opportunity to, to really look at that and how to be offensive now. So let me ask you this question, because there's a lot to navigate in the restaurant business to begin with, with a lot of um, um, 
Board of Health, right, and, and other requirements, OSHA probably as well, I'm guessing. So what are the things that you have to learn now to be open, or do you not even know yet for this COVID-19 situation? We have no idea. Um, there's speculation um, on a lot of the restaurant sites, um, you know, restaurant startups, things like that, um, any of the the, the sites that we're on that we get information from. There's a lot of speculation, um, a lot of sanitation courses, things like sure. that. But we have no idea. I mean, we have no idea when we're gonna be able to be open here in New York State. Um, we have no idea when it's all going to happen. We have no idea what tomorrow is gonna bring. So, yeah. you know, so it's just constantly reading up on things, keeping up on the trends, keeping up on what is coming up. Um, I mean, sorry, my this is my office, right? Because I have not been in my office in, <laughs> in weeks, yeah. um, besides about an hour a day and the rest of the time uh, from seven in the morning till, you know, 10, till I drop at 10, 10, 30 at night is spent out in the restaurant doing stuff, getting stuff ready and whatnot. But, you know, we all are going to have to just figure out how it works for us in whatever yeah. business we're in. And I love talking to people in other businesses because that's a great way to learn from other people as well. And, yeah. you know, I take- so I wanted to do this series, you know? Exactly. And I think it's great. I think it's a great series. I think it's wonderful. I love, you know, the book club that you were, that you are doing. Um, I love all that stuff. I think that it's all part of the shift that we're all shifting towards. And yeah. We don't know what that shift is going to be and when it's going to end and where it's, where where we're headed. So we just have to keep our heads up and and push forward as best as we can. And and a lot of people are gonna find out a lot of things about themselves through all of this. That's interesting. I was gonna ask you, what have you learned about yourself through this? That I'm stronger than I probably know. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I'm a strong person. Um, and I, I've just learned a lot about, about being a little more patient, but also putting my foot forward and, and saying no to some things. I've had to say no to, uh, to some things. I've also had to go out there and search for other things. Um, and then one of the things I've learned, but I, I don't yet get to do is I need to be, take more time for myself, mm. um, probably meditate a little bit more. I work out every day. Um, I go on a run, a hike, a walk. Some days I only get to do 50 sit-ups, but I do something every day. Yeah. Um, I get frustrated when I can't. Um, but I've learned that which I've always known, you have to be flexible. And flexibility for me right now is the name of the game. Um, ask for help. Uh, we have um, some team members that I've had to ask for help uh, packing orders. You know, right after this call today, uh, we start packing up about 10 large grocery orders to go. We did 10 yesterday. It, the list is growing every, every day, the people. So I have, um, I have team members that come in, they help me pack on Fridays because Friday seems to be a really busy day and um, pick up, you know, then they can help run the food out to the cars because people don't want to come in. Right. And so, you know, I've had to ask for help. Um, that can be quite challenging and quite difficult. Um, and, uh, you know, again- Is that I, something you normally would be hesitant? Would for help. Oh, interesting. So I'm that's sure. pushed you out of a comfort zone. It has. It definitely, definitely has pushed me out of a comfort zone. And I think I'll ask for more help, you know, going, going forward. Good. Um, started bringing staff members back this week to help me clean because I was trying to do everything and I just can't do it. Clean and pick up. And, you know, I, I spray everything and I'm cleaning everything constantly, but I want it to be one day where somebody comes in and sweeps for me the whole dining room and I'm not just spot sweeping on other days and I'm spraying the door handles and I'm spraying the pens and I'm you know washing my hands and we're doing all these things that we don't have time for everything else so um yeah. so I've definitely you know been able to figure that part out a little bit so so you learned that you're stronger than you thought you were you've learned to ask for help yes and what else Ooh. um I Hmm. Let's see. I, I have to be flexible, um, which I've always known because the restaurant business, you have to be flexible. My kid, my kids know that they're, they know they cannot ask me a question in the middle of dinner service, at least when they were younger. Now they're, now they're, <laughs> they're older. growing up in the business, right? Now they're older and they work with me, which is great. Well, let me ask you this. Have you thought about um, actually the difference between knowing what's in your control and what's not in your control? Have you learned a little about that? I have. I have. I, I don't have control over 
what the government says right now. Right. Um, I don't have control over those things. You know, I mean, we've had quite a lot going on. I don't have control about my son graduating. You know, you, you look forward to your senior year, you know, your whole life, right? Yeah. So when you're born, it's like, oh my gosh, that little, that, you know, that, that senior is getting, let's go watch them. They're at prom and, da, 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 and whatever, you know, you're watching that as you're growing up and, you know, to see my son who just turned 18, not to be able to have a big party and not to, um, not to have prom and graduation and all that stuff that can be, um, you know, that can be, uh, um, uh, difficult. And so I have to be, I have to, I have to say that's not, not in my control. You know, one yeah. of the things that I just wanted to kind of throw out there when you were saying I had to get out of my comfort zone a little bit, uh -huh. you know, I do my Facebook lives every day. Oh uh, yes. Talk so about that. I do a happy hour with Jamie yeah. uh, every day at four o'clock on Facebook through Aroma Time. And, um, I would never have done a Facebook live by really? myself. I've done a few, but not many. And I just love it. I just, I, I took hold of it right away. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do Facebook lives and I'm going to make a drink of the day. So, you know, I read this article in the New York times that my cousin had sent me about the ritual of happy hour. So oh. there's a ritual, which is why it's ha called happy hour. The ritual is you need that downtime, right? You need that slow downtime and that forced people on Friday afternoons to go have happy hour right. at five o'clock or whatever. I do it at four because five o'clock we get busy. But I got to tell you, I get like 60 people watching me. That's um, great. I get people who come in who buy the ingredients to make those drinks at home because we sell a lot of it. And I'm always taking requests for drinks if people want me to make a drink. And they're fun. And they're not, a lot of times I'm throwing it together in five minutes before. And they're great. I love them. And I, I enjoy doing them. I enjoy that interaction um, yeah. with people who are joining me. So uh, if you want to- And listen, <laughs> let's, let's be real. I mean, a lot, if not a, you know, a large number of the people who are sheltering at home right now are not sitting around watching TV all day. I mean, a lot of us are working. So many people are homeschooling their kids. God bless them. I don't know how they're doing it. And um, they're, they're living very full days. So if, if, you know, you doing this thing at four o'clock is a great way to say, you know what, I have to say, I have to end my day right now. I have to decompress. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we talk about this a lot at, you know, in, in Keller Williams, because everyone is home. And, you know, even though real estate agents are, are self-employed and contractors, you know, um, they're really home now in a way that they haven't been before. And, and the staff is working from home 24 seven and structuring your time is important, mm -hmm. but really putting up boundaries because our home is our work. Our work is where we're, you know, we're living. So I love that you do that four o'clock thing. I think a lot of people could really, you know, get into that and have some fun with it. It's fun. It, it is fun. I definitely enjoy it. And I think people enjoy, and they have me marked, you know, that Jamie's starting her Facebook live now. So it's cool. It's, yeah. it's a lot of the same people on, which I love. Um, and I'm just giving people something to look forward to every day. Right. Um, no yeah, other and that's so big right work. now, right? I mean, we have to connect and, and, and find things to be grateful for and optimistic about and happy about. And, you know, that makes a huge difference in, in managing, you know, the feelings that are showing up through this event too, this whole COVID-19. Um, so I have, an, I have another question for you. What and you may have touched on this already, but what are you doing now that's working so well that you never would have thought before this would have worked? So, um, you know, Marcus and I have always done uh, wine dinners, wine tastings uh, once a month um, or so, beer dinners. And so I never thought like a Zoom call, virtual wine tasting um, or um, we did a wine, a bottle of wine last weekend, and now we're doing, um, this week we're doing a tequila tasting, so a virtual tequila tasting. You pick up the tequila from us, we put them in little jars, and you take it home, you join our Zoom call, and we have musicians on as well, so that's really cool, right? You have a musician on. And so you almost feel like you're in that setting of a bar, you're drinking, but you're not with people, but at least you can see people. And I never, ever, ever would have thought something like that would have worked. I mean, I never would have. Um, so definitely that. Um, hmm, what else have I been seeing that, um, that I never would have thought worked? Um, 
the same faces coming in every day to get our really? nine special, right? Because they don't want to cook at home. They're, you know, again, like you said, we have so many things on our plate. One parent's home with the kids, one parent is out working because they're an essential employee, or both parents are home working and they have the kids. And the last thing they want to do at five, six o'clock is start thinking about dinner. Yeah. Um, so for $9.99, they just come and get, you know, dinner for, for their family. Um, yeah. I think, um, well, you tell me, are you finding that there is also a really strong sense of community around you? People really, if they can, you know, if they can afford to, they want to support local businesses. And, uh, you know, I know that some people I've talked to are very motivated to do that once or twice a week, you know, go, go out and get food from a restaurant so that we can support you. Are you finding that too? I am. And I'm, I'm finding that people are like, getting food to go, sitting in our parking lot, having a picnic in their car. We've wow. gone outside, it's a loud music. And they're like, wow, your son is really jamming upstairs. And I'm like, no, that's our music. We just want you to sit outside ah, and enjoy. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, things like that, um, we did music in the gar. We did music out in the parking lot last Sunday. Um, we had people who came and sat in their cars and listened. Um, so we're just trying to do things to keep people motivated to want to keep going. Yeah. And, and I think you're right. I think that people are definitely trying to support as much as they can. That's um, great. You know, and I, I, we are extremely, extremely thankful for all of that support because without it, we wouldn't, you know, be able to survive and yeah. we wouldn't be able to be creative. So we're being creative for everybody else because we really want to give everybody the experience without having an experience in the restaurant. That's great. You know, aside from the current environment and everything that's happened in the last eight weeks, what would you say is the most challenging part of being a small business owner? Oh boy, being a small business owner. <laughs> Yeah, um, the outreach. Um, and I think over the many years, there, there weren't always so many small businesses. Um, I mean, at least for us in terms of restaurant wise, there, we were the only ones for a long time. And now there's, you know, four or five on our block and one just opened a few weeks ago. And so I think I think it's great because the more you have, the more people will come to your area. Competition is always, you know, is always a good thing. Um, in terms of being a small business, I mean, I think just not having the resources that big, large corporations have um, yeah. can be challenging. Um, we don't have those those resources. I don't have a human resource department. I am the human resource department. And I think just trying to do everything. I don't have a bookkeeper. I am the bookkeeper. Yeah. I do all the ordering. I do the bartending on the weekends. Um, but right, you know, and obviously right now I'm doing even more. Um, yeah. But but being a small business, you also have a lot more interaction and connection with people. And that is the part that I love. And it's the connections, like our connection, which started yeah. years ago, that you build upon. And we're, we're always building upon those connections. And, you know, I, I had people that I haven't seen in, in a couple of weeks, you know, I, I send them emails. Um, I try to just be a smile on people's faces, whether it's an email or I get to see them out in the parking lot and give them a virtual hug or whatever it is. And I think that's the part of being a small business that makes it so worthwhile. Yeah. It's gratifying, right? It is. And so, you know, not so being a small business has so many you know grateful things you know that you can be grateful for but the large corporations don't have those opportunities because they are so big yeah and, um you know they're doing so much you know I, I would also say not being able to buy in huge large quantities right like big corporations um so we don't have the storage we don't have the means to be able to do all of those things so you know those are probably downfalls of being a small business but for the most part i mean we love our small business and we love our guests and we love the people that support us and we are just so incredibly grateful for it so how have you found managing business? I mean, like I said, your kids grew up in this business, right? You've, yes. you've been in the restaurant business 17 years mm -hmm. and your children are how old? 18 and almost 21. So. Yeah. So they were babies, toddlers when you started. I mean, talk about that. Do you remember how hard was that? 
Well, luckily we had both of my family, both of our families, um, my parents and my in-laws both lived a half a mile from the restaurant. So they were huge, huge support for us at the beginning um, and throughout. I mean, they still are huge supports um, for us. Um, and so we rely upon them for lots of different things. Um, you know, it used to be running just into baseball practice or running Courtney to horseback riding or whatever. I mean, once they became able to drive themselves, it became a little bit easier, but now, not only were they driving themselves, but I had to like focus on where they were while doing everything else. I didn't know that they were at my parents' house. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> where they were. So I always had to like have that in the back of my mind. Um, but now they're both over 18. So, you know, yeah. I mean. You think they've learned a lot from watching you guys in the business? I, I see that with my kids. You know, they, they, they have a very strong sense of being independent and, and driven. And even though they're not entrepreneurs, any three uh, of the three of them, but they definitely, I believe, have learned a lot from watching uh, their parents grow businesses. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I watch them both almost at the same ages throughout be like, oh my gosh, I'm never working in the restaurant business. Oh my God, I'm never doing this because they would watch us. And then they both work in the restaurant with us. Are they going to use that as a career? No. But they watch us work hard, which pushes them to work hard and yeah. have those entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial leadership, skills. right? They, they leadership. develop leadership. Absolutely. I mean, my son, I've watched him, you know, grow into a fine baseball player and pushing every team um, that he is on to be the best, or he pushes himself to be the best. And he, there is no giving up. It's not an option. And our daughter is very similar. I mean, she works at a vet office and she works her butt off and she loves it. She's around animals and she's doing what she loves. You know, I miss them, uh, you know, miss the restaurant being open and them being around. Yeah. Uh, my son is helping out a lot at the restaurant. Our daughter is not. Um, she is uh, working a lot more at the vet office, but I do believe they have those leadership skills and they can, they can do anything they set their minds to too. And that was things that we wanted to instill in them and to, to believe in what you believe in and not to veer off path and, and always go for what you believe in and, and keep strong and hold strong on that. So, yeah, I could talk to you for hours, you know I'm that, not, but I, I want to be mindful of your time and everybody else's time, but I'm, I'm, I want to ask what thriving means to you today. What does thriving mean to me? Thriving means never giving up. Um, mm -hmm. Thriving means growing. Um, you're always going to have pains in, in it, but, but you're always going to grow. Uh, thriving means being successful in whatever way you are successful. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean money in the bank. It means a good family, good people around you, um, building, thriving on what you need to grow as a person. So um, I love that word, thrive. Um, because we're always thriving for more, right? We always want more, want more, want more. And I think um, having a, a path that you follow is is important, so. Yes, I, I agree. I think thriving, like you said, it is about growth and moving forward. And um, surviving sometimes is just managing the status quo, but thriving is really pushing past that. So I love that. And um, so um, tell everyone again where your restaurant yeah. is. Sure. So aroma time, bistro time, like the herb, um, aroma from the beautiful smells. Time is Marcus's favorite herb and bistro kind of gives us a little, uh, you know, a little definition of what we are. Um, we are in Ellenville in, on Canal Street. We are a farm to table restaurant. We pride ourselves on all ingredients that we're bringing in. I know I'm repeating myself. No, um, but it's okay. Someone may have come in at the end, you know. Sure. Um, right now we are open. We are open for takeout and um, um, to go and take out and deliveries uh, a little bit. We have formulated into a grocery store. So you can check out our grocery list um, on our website, aromatimebistro.com. And you're on Facebook too, right? I am. We're on Facebook personally and Aroma Time Farm to Table, I think it's called. Um, and Marcus and I just want to give you a good experience and we want to make sure that everybody is taken care of. And, you know, we have families that call us every week for food right now, um, you know, deliver, you know, lots of food to, to their families who are, who are hibernating at home because they have to, yeah. <laughs> um, we're quarantined, but um, we just, 
you know, we love what we do. We're a family owned business. We've been here 17 years. Our kids grew up here and um, we are- That's some deep roots, right? We, we do. And we're a family. Um, not only my immediate family, but our guests that come in. I mean, we want you to feel like you're at home at all times with us. Yeah. So last question in closing, what would you say to someone watching who maybe they're a restaurant owner or they're a small business owner? Maybe they, they're struggling. They don't quite have the optimistic viewpoint you do right now. Maybe they haven't been able to pivot or they're trying to pivot and they're struggling. What words of encouragement uh, can you leave uh, anyone here watching who's in business right now? Sure. So take notes, um, start a journal. Um, I think that kind of helped me at the beginning of all of this eight weeks ago is journaling, um, making notes on where you want to go, um, seeing a clear path, having faith that it's all going to work out. Um, let's see, um, find a coach, somebody mm. who can help you. You know, it might just be a friend who is a coach. It might be somebody that you can just pick up, right? That you can pick up the phone. I mean, Marcus and I, we coach other restaurants. Yeah. Now we're not charging them because we, we don't feel we want to. We want you to be successful. But we want to give you good, valuable information because we want to see everybody succeed. And, and we know that what we're doing right now is successful. And so we want to give those to you. So I would definitely say, um, find somebody that you connect with, yeah. um, and talk to them. And even if it's only for five minutes a day, right? We sometimes only get five minutes. Yeah. Some won't get any time, but just that connection with somebody will help you grow and figure out what you want and what you don't want. I mean, that's important. You have to come up with the, this is not what I want, because when you don't want that, you want to go the other way and you're only going to push yourself down the right path of what's for you. And you know what? It might not be the path you're on might not be where you want it to be. And so you might jump off and get on the next train and take another path. And so I think that's super important to remember. Beautiful. Jamie, thank you. This was really awesome. You really, I'm so excited that you and Marcus are taking your, your business in, in a different direction. I can't wait to come in and have dinner again. And, no. <laughs> you know, I look forward to that yet. Um, it's just great to see how you were able to be resilient and, and just continue to grow from here and be, be, to be thriving really. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. For uh, I appreciate Thanks for anyone who was able to join us. So we, um, yeah, I look forward to um, bringing on more small business owners who can share their experiences and it'll be interesting to see um, the similarities. Yep. And the differences too. So Unless next week could be totally different, right? We could have to reformulate and get onto another path as well. We have no idea. So, you know, I'd love to come back again and talk, uh, you know, we can come up with yeah. some other questions and, and uh, I'd love it. So All right. I, it's a plan. You, you have great energy and you're awesome. So thank Aww, you. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, it was my pleasure. All right. So I'm going to let you get back to Perfect. your day. And I, I, of course, thank have you. another meeting to get to, too. But thanks for anyone who joined us. This was great. Yes, thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. And, you know, if you have any comments, go to a Roman Time Bistro. If you want to see me make any mm -hmm. drinks, go there. And Yeah, 4 o'clock is happy hour. <laughs> <Coming> soon. <laughs> All right, Jamie. Thanks again. Thank you. All right. Bye.